Hey everyone, this is a tutorial on how to make percussion effects in LMMS using the SFXR plugin. I've had quite a few questions asking how I make my 8-bit percussion sounds in LMMS, but the only thing I've told people so far is that I use the SFXR plugin. Uh, I use the SX SFXR plugin to make all of my sounds, from kick drums, the snares, the hi-hats, to some of the sweeps you hear in my music, but I haven't really gone into detail about the uh, different aspects of this plugin and how I use it to make percussion music. I mean, today I'm going to try to give you a brief overview of the different sounds that are achievable using this plugin, but before I begin, I'd like to make it clear that I'm by no means a percussion expert. I actually feel that percussion is one of the weaker points of my music, but I do feel that I have a strong understanding of how this plugin works and uh, a good understanding of the sounds that can be achieved with this plugin, but not necessarily the different rhythms that can be made with percussion in general. So I hope you enjoy. The first sound I'm going to show you how to make is the bass drum sound, which sounds like this. The bass drum is going to be the backbone of your percussion and act as a structure for the rest of your percussive sounds like snares and hi-hats. This bass drum is made using the noise wave like all the percussion I'll be showing you how to make is. The most important thing about this is the slide. It has a negative slide, which means that the note's pitch is going to decrease quite quickly after you press and hold the note, which is important for getting a low sound for your bass drum. The next sound I'm going to show you is a type of 8-bit kick drum, which sounds like this. Unlike the bass drum, this sound is a bit higher and it doesn't have any slide. Also, the hold, sustain, and decay times are quite a bit longer, which means that the sound isn't going to be as choppy as the bass drum. The next sound I'm going to show you is the 8-bit hi-hat, which sounds like this. I find it's good for more complex percussive sequences because it's easier to, easy to hear over your bass drums and your snares, and uh, is quite quick and has a fast decay time. It has no slide and has a much higher starting frequency than the kick drum or the bass drum. The next sound is the 8-bit crash, which is a little bit like a cymbal. It sounds like this. I like to use the crash at the beginning of a bar or at the beginning of a new section. It's essentially a hi-hat with a longer decay time so that the sound doesn't die off as quickly. Some good dials to play with other than the decay are the attack, hold and sustain punch buttons, which are going to help in changing how the crash begins. Next, I'd like to show you some of the 8-bit sweeps I use in my music. First, I'll show you the upward sweep, which sounds like this. And by changing the slide to negative and increasing the starting frequency, you can change it to a downward sweep, like this. So both these plugins are very similar in structure to the 8-bit crash. Uh, but they have obviously a modified slide and a modified starting frequency, but otherwise they have the same purpose of beginning a section or bar. Next, I'd like to show you how to combine your finished percussive sounds in a rhythm. The first option is to use a bass line, which allows you to use multiple percussive tracks in one module. So an example of a bass line that I use is this in my song Nocturnal. <laughs> So I find the bass line good for simple rhythmic patterns that are going to be repeated a lot throughout a piece because it's easy to write them and not much work is needed to repeat them over the course of a song. The second option for putting your finished percussive tracks in a song is to use a piano roll. The piano roll allows you to make much more complex rhythms like swing and also allows you to easily change the pitch of an instrument like a snare uh, without creating a second track for it. So you can make things like this within a piano roll. So the disadvantage of a piano roll is that it can only handle one sound at a time, unlike the bass line. Uh, it's, the piano roll is accessible within the bass line, but I much prefer to separate an instrument like a snare or a kick drum so I can make complex melodies and uh, not have to worry about it being in the bass line because they're often quite annoying to manipulate. Here's the percussion for one of my songs that I wrote using the sounds I showed you today 
and both piano rolls and bass lines. And that's it for this tutorial. Please leave a comment if you have any other questions related to LMS or any other tutorial ideas that you'd like me to make. Uh, thanks for watching and have a good day.